Good evening. On behalf of the Talbert Community Schools Corporation, I would like to welcome you to the commencement ceremony honoring the class of 2022. Today you see sitting before you a distinguished group of young adults. They have excelled in character, academics, service, and extracurriculars. They have represented themselves, their families, the school, and this community in outstanding fashion. I congratulate the class members on their accomplishments and it is an honor for me to be a part of this very important occasion. I would like to begin tonight's ceremony by introducing our first student speaker, Natalie Stevens. While a student at Culver Community, Natalie has participated in Cavs Club, Psycho, Art Club, Spanish Club, cheerleading, and was a football manager. Natalie will attend Colorado State University and major in interior architecture and design. Natalie is the daughter of Chris and Rayanne Stevens. everyone responsible for getting us here today. Our administration, faculty, staff, parents, friends, peers, and everyone in between. Graduating high school is no small feat. Even though it's only the beginning, it's a huge accomplishment that every single one of us has worked at for the past 13 years. Pablo Picasso said, inspiration exists, but it has to find us working. We are only as capable as the amount of effort we put in. More effort is required at different times and in different areas for every individual. Each one of us has had different struggles throughout our school careers, and while these differentiate us, they also create a balance, bringing us even closer together. Even if we don't always love to admit it, we have a special dynamic as a class. For a fraction of the senior class, our educational journey at Culver began in kindergarten, middle school, or maybe even high school. However, for many of us here today, our story began long before. A significant number of our class attended Priscilla's Fun and Learning Daycare where we created some of our very first memories and friendships. We've gone from pretending to take a nap so we could go outside to wishing we could lay down for just a minute. If we didn't meet in preschool, maybe our siblings were friends, we played sports together or took a dance class, we've all grown up within an arm's reach. Moving on to kindergarten was an adjustment. Some of our preschool friends went to different schools and we no longer got nap time. On the other hand, we had milk time, recess, and lots of flavored tootsie rolls. We learned how to tie cardboard shoes and fought over whose turn it was to read in the loft. Mrs. Vandafuddy never failed to send us home with a little gift for the tooth fairy. Miss Lyman's art class taught some of us how to sew and taught some of us that crayons are not weapons. We started to develop some independence and in turn made some horrible fashion statements. During this time, we found some new hobbies, discovered new friends, and worked hard in preparation for the annual spelling bee. Second grade included show and tell with Mrs. Elanius, where someone's dog pooped on the classroom floor, creating the no pets rule. This year has always had a certain significance due to the fact we welcomed a good chunk of students from the Monterey school system. We were reunited with some familiar faces and introduced to many new ones. We were opened up to the enchanting world of the Magic Treehouse series and went crazy for a book fair. Moving on up to third grade, literally and figuratively, we were upstairs and thrilled to be in such close proximity to the cafeteria. It was the, end of, it was the era of greetings and ice cream cone multiplication, and it wouldn't be the complete third grade experience without Mrs. Coltice in tears at least once. In fourth grade, we learned some responsibility. You had to if you wanted to survive Mrs. Shepard's class. This was the year of the giant cookie and trips to Amish Acres in Connor Prairie, where we took way too much photo evidence on our iPods. In fifth grade, we did the wax museum in my mom's class with a touch of sparkle from Miss Kinsey. We went on a field trip to the Indiana Dunes and never failed to get pumped for Rick Glassman. Way too much fun was had in Mrs. Breeden's class, along with lots of conflict. This is the year many of us began travel sports, bringing stress and drama, but also a sense of sportsmanship and teamwork that we've had the opportunity to build on for years. Next up is sixth grade. We were top of the food chain and definitely more confident than we should have been. At this point, the sixth grade class shared laptops, obviously for schoolwork and research. Instead, we played an unhealthy amount of duck life and little alchemy. 
Suddenly, we'd had our last spring fling, our last band and choir concerts, and our last outside recesses. I was absolutely terrified to go to middle school, with good reason. Middle school was wild. There was never a quiet day. We were the last group to attend sixth grade in the elementary school. Beginning middle school, we were in very close proximity to only one other class. It was a whole new experience that created some unbreakable bonds and strained others. There was a shift in attitude, perspective, and relationships, along with work ethic and personality. We had a new level of athletic competition and put on the musical Guys and Dolls with the high school theater. We slowly adjusted to the new environment and even got big kid lockers. Eighth grade put us right back in charge. We'd survived Mr. Browder, some more unscathed than others, so what more could we be worried about? The trip to Kings Island did not last long enough. It was a blast until the bus ride home. We were all secretly nervous about what was in store for us. There was what seemed to be a never-ending list of new classes and a wide selection of clubs and extracurricular activities along with opportunities to meet fresh faces. With growing expectations, we prepared for the next checkpoint in our young adult lives. Going into high school was a bigger change than I expected. Not only did I get to know myself better, I got to know everyone else on different levels. As you do in high school, we branched out and joined clubs. While the abundance of new people to meet and connections to make were exciting, it was stressful. I've come to the realization you can't surround yourself with people based on their roots or your history, but the actions they take and especially the ones they don't. Back at the bottom of the totem pole, we scrambled through the halls, stressed about homework, practices, and jobs, and were challenged in a wide variety of new ways. We finally got to use the big gym and the varsity locker rooms and even experienced lunch with the entire high school for a couple years. In addition to these pros, our day-to-day -day lives consisted of a whole new team of educators, some who opened up our minds to new perspectives and opportunities, and some who might have scrambled them a bit. Eager to finish freshman year, things were expected to settle down. Sophomore year, some of us had the chance to experience one of Mrs. Faubert's speech classes. While our class was often loud and had some questionable topics, it was an opportunity to present something you were passionate about or learn about something completely random. Even though not many of us enjoyed the actual speaking part, it was one of the building blocks that got us here today. I was definitely more comfortable with the schedule and I'd learned to walk a little faster, unless of course I could get someone to write me a pass. We felt the pressure of Mr. Bushman's math class for the first time and felt the high expectations he held through the enthusiasm for his job. While math is not my preferred subject, I learned a lot more than algebraic equations in that classroom. Through our high school careers, we were instilled with a strategic work ethic, reached an incredible level of multitasking, and perfected the ability to get a double entry journal done in eight minutes flat. We won Fall Bonanza and got the Golden Plunger for the first time. After that, things got ugly. We were hit with the pandemic and all sent home. We missed out on our sports seasons and club trips, dances and after school activities, and everyday interaction with our peers and teachers. Even though I was scared and uncertain of the future, I, along with a lot of other students, were honestly glad to have a little break from school, practices, and work. A majority of people say to enjoy it and only tell you good stories, but it's been a real challenge. Diving full-time into virtual learning did not help. For me, junior year was a reality check. We moved houses, my brother moved to college, and I stayed virtual for quite a while. I had a shift in perspective, and I think that's what's important about this whole experience. The expectations were growing and the classes were getting more advanced. No matter how reluctant I was to go back to school, I knew it was in my best interest academically, mentally, and socially. I came back in time to do some dissections in Mrs. Hammond's anatomy class and to win Fall Bonanza again. We were masked up off and on and had waves of quarantines. There were endless lists of rules and regulations, not only in our classrooms, but everywhere else we went. We all experienced loss at a time it was hard to physically be together, and I think that strengthened our connections and weeded out unimportant differences. Senior year has been a blur. None of us believed how fast it would come, no matter how many times we've heard it. We've been settled into this routine, this pattern, and while these are personal and unique to each individual sitting here before me, we are all a staple of each other's daily routines. Whether that be for the last two years, the last 10, or since we were in diapers, We've been a consistent part of various milestones in each other's lives. We won Fall Bonanza for the third time and attended our final prom. We were the first class to go on senior trip to Florida post-pandemic and definitely made it count. The Pegasus heard some things no one should have to. My high school experience has taught me a lot more than how to use the Oxford comma in the capital of Greece. It's taught me that everyone is wired differently, 
and that there's an explanation for every action and trait. More importantly, I've learned it's okay not to know all of those explanations. Over the years, we've all experienced highs and lows. It's been a serious challenge, but it's only prepared us for the next one to come. I'm incredibly grateful for the sense of community I have been provided with during my very long journey here at Culver. If there's one thing we all have in common, it's an intense support system. While we have a strong connection to each other in this town, we also seem to have a strong sense of independence and drive, launching us into the next phase of our lives. We don't realize the rarity of our situation. No matter where we end up, there will always be a home here. We have a number of students enlisted, some of us have jobs lined up, some are preparing for college, and some of us are still figuring it out. If you're going far away or staying close to home, my hope is that you'll all find something worth working for. That's where the inspiration strikes. Thank you. Our second student speaker this evening is Sophie Heath.
While a student at Culver Community, Sophie has participated in Cavs Club, Spanish Club, Student Council, FFA, and is a member of the soccer team. Sophie will attend Ivy Tech Lafayette and major in nursing. Sophie is the daughter of Jeff Heath and Allison Gaskell. I'd like to begin by sharing a quote that was said by Lynn Manuel Miranda. My dear terrified graduates, you are about to enter the most uncertain and thrilling period of your lives. Many people would say that after tonight, we all start our own journey. However, I disagree with this. Our journey began a very long time ago, and tonight just so happens to be the night where the path we've been walking splits into 64 unique roads. Many of us have attended Culver Community since our very first day of school. We walked through the seemingly gigantic front doors of the elementary school with the tightest grip on our parents' hands. Absolutely terrified, we were ever so warmly greeted by Ms. Bonine, Ms. Obermeyer, and Ms. Urban. If you struck both of Ms. Bonine, you'd encounter monarch butterflies, painting and shaving cream, and even get the chance to meet her Madagascar cockroaches. If you were really lucky, you may have even scored a tootsie roll. We moved throughout the downstairs halls of the elementary, creating homemade paper with Miss Lyman in first grade and celebrating the Super Bowl with Miss Bailey in second grade. Just in case you were wondering, the Patriots won. <laughs> After we completed our journey downstairs, it was time to move on up. We sorted through bags in the recycling club and cried crocodile tears about Old Yeller with Miss Coltis. We then measured the area and perimeter of Miss Shepard's entire classroom, just so we could learn how to make a three foot wide chocolate chip cookie. Alas, we came upon our very last year of elementary school. Sixth grade. We were almost as excited as we are tonight. We were trusted with MacBooks to do our work on, celebrated Pi Day with Mr. Schaefer, and although we did not get to make our two liter fish tanks like every other sixth grader did, we still made the most of every moment we had before the big transition to middle school. As we moved up the street to middle school, it appeared to be what a very popular Disney song once said, a whole new world. We were lucky enough to learn algebra with Mr. Browder and learn that if it's not his way, it's the highway. To add a pro tip, don't ever try and sneak your phone into his class. We completed the yearbook of Miss Patera, ran down the boardwalks of Indiana Beach with our best friends, and performed in our first play, Guys and Dolls, with Miss Darrow. We ended our middle school careers with an exhilarating field trip to Kings Island and not a clue what the next year had in store for us. I think many of my classmates would agree with me when I say that freshman year was the calm before the storm. Having the ability to choose your own path of which classes you were going to take left us in total awe. We played our first year of varsity sports and received our very first varsity letter, the Big C. We were able to publish the school newspaper with Miss Benner and attend Purdue Band Day in the pouring rain with Mr. Crittenden. We took our very first Spanish class with Mr. Liu and held fiestas as often as he would let us. As we moved on to sophomore year, we had no idea the turn our lives were about to take. The school year started like any other year. River rafting with Miss Hammond for chemistry and field trips to the state fair with Miss Sleeper. Everything was completely normal until Friday, March 13th, 2020, when Mr. Barron gave the overhead announcement that our spring break would be shortly extended. Now, this type of extension is definitely one that I wish I could get for Ms. Faubert's English class, because it's the longest one we've ever received. In hopes of returning in two short weeks, we ended up returning to our school five months later in the following fall. When they say that junior year is the hardest year, I think we can all agree with that. From wearing masks in every class, constantly getting contact traced, taking the SAT for the first time, college visits, and taking your first AP class, it was far from easy, but we made it through. Our final year of high school started with a long-needed sense of normality. Sports were finally back to normal, no more masks in class. We had ultimately made it to the year of class. It was finally our turn to be the big dog, as Mr. Kling would say. We won the Golden Plunger of Fall Bonanza for the third and last time, said our goodbyes to our younger teammates on our senior nights, cheered for the basketball teams in our last cheer blocks, performed our last laps with Ms. Hammond, and wrote our very last speeches for Ms. Hobart's class. This year, our class was lucky enough to attend our school's senior trip to Florida. With special thanks to Mr. and Mrs. Stevens, Mr. Zayner, Mr. Elliott, and Ms. Hammond, we were able to go on the excursion of a lifetime. We waited hours in line with our best friends to experience the famous Space Mountain ride, 
Jammed out to Aerosmith on the rock and roller coaster, spent copious amounts of money on souvenirs at gift shops, learned to never open your eyes in ocean water, and spent way too much time debating with their roommates over who would get to take the first shower. Nevertheless, the class of 2022 is eternally grateful to all of our teachers, administrators, and staff who made our time here such a memorable experience. Without their help, we may have never been able to learn things such as the ever so useful quadratic formula, when to use an Oxford comma, and what words that we should never say in Spanish. As we begin to take different exits off of the same highway we've been on together for the past 13 years, I hope that we're all able to remember the wonderful memories we created at Culver Community and continue to use the life skills we've learned amongst our time here. As most do, I've chosen to end this speech with a quote that I believe all of us here tonight should live by. The road of life twists and turns, and no two directions are ever the same, yet our lessons come from the journey, not the destination, said by Don Williams. Congratulations to the senior class of 2022. May we all succeed in the years ahead and continue to make our parents even more proud of us than they are tonight. At this time, I would like to invite Mrs. Missy Trent, Director of Guidance, to join me on stage to assist in presenting scholarship and special awards. Elizabeth Pugh, daughter of Jeff and Amy Pugh, attending Miami University of Ohio, top 10 student, Odom Funeral Home Scholarship, Marianne Renzel Memorial Scholarship, Eunice Scripture Memorial Scholarship, CCMHS Staff Scholarship, Charles and Lenore M. Kaiser Scholarship, Leonard C. Ethel Hoffman Scholarship, Paul A. Humbert Scholarship, Marshall County 4-H Foundation Scholarship, Miami University Red Hawk Excellence Scholarship, Darton United Methodist Church Scholarship, and Culver Tri Kappa Scholarship. <laughs> Kiara Parker, daughter of Douglas and Kimberly Parker, attending Ball State University, top 10 students, Mike Sell Flores Scholarship, Palmer Fund Scholarship, Dorothy Irene Mitchell Memorial Nursing Scholarship, Leonard C. Ethel H. Hoffman Scholarship, Paul A. Humbert Scholarship. Dalton Powell, attending Ivy Tech. <laughs> Savannah Hissong, daughter of Ann and Teresa Hissong, attending Indiana University Bloomington. Top 10 student, Larry Linhart Scholarship. Leonard C. Ethel H. Hoffman Scholarship, Paul A. Humbert Scholarship, Culver Tri Kappa Scholarship. Adrian Owen Scouten, son of Andrew, Andrew and Emily Scouten, attending Purdue University. Top 10 student, Fulton County REMC Student Director Scholarship, Northern Indiana Power from the Past Scholarship, Robert Warner Kurtz Memorial Scholarship, Glenn and Lucille Overmeyer Scholarship, 
William and Barbara Snyder Scholarship, Donald Ziegler Memorial Scholarship, CCMHS Staff Scholarship, Leonard C. Ethel H. Hoffman Scholarship, Paul A. Humbert Scholarship, Dick Belcher Scholarship. Sydney Denham, daughter of Tommy and Colleen Denham, attending Ohio Northern University. Top 10 students, Trustee Scholarship, R.B. Kruger Scholarship, Ruth Shanks Memorial Scholarship, CCMHS Staff Scholarship, Leonard C. Ethel Hoffman Scholarship, Paul A. Humbert Scholarship. Mackenzie Banks, daughter of Michael and Rhiannon Banks, attending Embra, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Top 10 student, Dean Scholarship, Women of Excellence Scholarship, CCMHS Staff Scholarship, Leonard C. Ethel H. Hoffman Scholarship, Paul A. Humbert Scholarship. Alina Pizer, daughter of John and Barbara Pizer, attending Indiana University South Bend. Top 10 student, outstanding senior female athlete, First Farmers Bank and Trust Scholarship, Leonard C. Ethel H. Hoffman Scholarship, Paul A. Humbert Scholarship, JMC Engineers and Associates Scholarship. Natalie Stevens, daughter of Chris and Rayanne Stevens, attending Colorado State University. Top 10 student, Fulton County REMC Scholarship, VFW Ladies Auxiliary Scholarship, Everett J. Houghton and Frida J. Houghton Memorial, CCMHS Staff Scholarship, Leonard C. Ethel H. Hoffman Scholarship, Paul A. Humbert Scholarship. Marquez Anderson, son of Karen Lee, attending Franklin University, Coca-Cola Scholarship, Max Kentucky Players, Singers Drama Music Scholarship, CCMHS Staff Scholarship, Leonard C. Ethel H. Hoffman Scholarship, Paul A. Humbert Scholarship. Aiden Annis, son of Denver and Michelle Annis, attending Ivy Tech, Mark W. Vorey Scholarship, Leonard C. Ethel H. Hoffman Scholarship, Paul A. Humbert Scholarship, Culver Tri Kappa Scholarship. <laughs> Ivan Callender, son of Benjamin and Christy Callender, attending University of Advancing Technology University Scholarship. Ivan is also an early graduate, completing his courses his junior year. Liliana Campbell, daughter of Chris Campbell and Amanda Brunn, attending Indiana University South Bend. Leonard C. Ethel H. Hoffman Scholarship, Paul A. Humbert Scholarship, Deckelbaum Scholarship, Titan Gold Scholarship, Honors Scholarship. Liliana is also an early graduate, completing her courses her junior year. Lane Connor Covey, son of Jeff and Alicia Covey, attending Compass College of Film and Media, First National Bank of Monterey Technical Scholarship, BMW Men's Auxiliary, Charles and Lenore M. Kaiser Scholarship, Leonard C. Ethel H. Hoffman Scholarship, Paul A. Humbert Scholarship. Chloe Darnell, daughter of Charles and Stacy Darnell, attending Manchester University. Director's Award, Charles and Lenore M. Kaiser Scholarship, Leonard C. Ethel H. Hoffman Scholarship, and Paul A. Humbert Scholarship. Christopher J. Davis, son of Christopher and Dana Davis, will proudly be serving our country with the United States Army. Hunter Evans, son of Robert and Nicole Evans, will proudly be serving our country with the Indiana National Guard.
Sophia Fitzpatrick, daughter of Dennis and Lynn Fitzpatrick, attending University of Finlay, University of Finlay Scholarship. <laughs> Trenton Fritter, son of Johnny and Karen Fritter, Billy Trey's Apprenticeship Scholarship. Trenton will be participating in an apprentice program for building trades. He has been accepted into Carpentry Union. He is also an early grad, finishing his courses his junior year. <laughs> Christian Gearhart, grandson of Rick and Amy Gearhart, attending Grace College, Grace Achievement Award, Nickham Educational Foundation Scholarship, and CCMHS Staff Scholarship. Brady Moyes, son of Bill Moyes and Lisa Elliott, attending Indiana University South Bend, CCMHS Staff Scholarship, Leonard C. Ethel H. Hoffman Scholarship, Paul A. Humbert Scholarship, Everett J. Houghton and Frida J. Houghton Memorial Scholarship, and Culver Tri Kappa Scholarship. Cheyenne Evelyn Jean Moss, daughter of Larry and Nicole Moss, attending Indiana University South Bend. Betty Jean Wilson Zayner Memorial Scholarship, Paul A. Humbert Scholarship, and Culver Tri Kappa Scholarship. Skyler Pike, son of Scott Pike and Amy Heiser, Building Trades Apprentice Scholarship. Skyler will be participating in an apprenticeship program for building trades. <laughs> Noah Pratt, son of Kenny and Amanda Gilbert, proudly serving our country with the Indiana National Guard. <laughs> he will also be attending Trine University with a university scholarship, Leonard C. Ethel H. Hoffman Scholarship, and Paul A. Humbert Scholarship. <laughs> Jasmine Marie Quinn, daughter of Jack Quinn and Jessica Mendoza. Attending Purdue Northwest University, Leonard C. Ethel H. Hoffman Scholarship, and Paul A. Humbert Scholarship. <laughs> Ryan Sheets, son of Ryan Lee and Jane Sheets, proudly serving our country with the Indiana National Guard, <laughs> while also attending Indiana University, Purdue University in Indianapolis. <laughs> Hunter Sickmiller, son of Stephen Sickmiller and Amelia Russell, will proudly be serving our country with the Indiana National Guard. Braxton Haven Wolf, son of Ron and Melita Wilson, proudly serving our country with the Indiana National Guard. Grace Wood, daughter of David Wood and Cynthia Ballinger, attending Ivy Tech, Leonard C. Ethel H. Hoffman Scholarship, Paul A. Humbert Scholarship, and Culver Tri Kappa Scholarship. Elijah Wooten, son of Claudine Wooten, and grandson of Beatrice Roberts, attending Ball State, Leonard C. Ethel H. Hoffman Scholarship and Paul A. Humbert Scholarship. <laughs> Alex Zayner, son of Scott and Kristen Zayner, proudly serving our country with the Indiana National Guard. Austin Zayner, son of Andy and Connie Zayner, outstanding senior male athlete. I would like to congratulate this class and your big achievement, this class has received over $340,000 in scholarship money this year.
At this time, I would like to invite Mrs. Karen Schumann, Superintendent of Schools, to join me on stage to recognize the class of 2022. Mrs. Schumann, the students before you have completed the course of study prescribed by the state and local boards of education. I respectfully request that they be recognized at this time. Elizabeth Ann Pugh. Kira Mackenzie Parker. <laughs> Dalton Powell. <laughs> Savannah Grace Hissong. Adrian Owen Scout. Sydney Sue Denham. Mackenzie Michelle Banks. Hunter James Taylor. Alina Emily Heiser. <laughs> Natalie Michelle Stevens. Marquez Anderson. Aiden Annis. Matthew James Bailey. Kyle Beach. <laughs> Dalton Thomas Binkley. Aiden Fisher. Anna Lee Bolabacher. Yeah. Anik Sophie Faust. Yeah. Ivan Michael Callender. Yeah. Liliana Campbell. Michaela Elizabeth Cottle. Lane Kobe. Kennedy Rose Creviston. Chloe Renee Darnell. Christopher Joseph Davis. Yeah. 
Michaela Lillian Dow. Alexis Michelle Duncan. Hunter Dwayne Evans. Tucker Ryan Fisher. Sophia Claire Fitzpatrick. Trenton Wayne Fritter. Christian Ezekiel Gearhart. William Thomas Gregory. <laughs> Sophia Luna Heath. <laughs> Wyatt Esting. Lola Dolores Hueso Fonteja. Jalen Levan King. Diana Mariana Lava. Cheyenne Nicole Lindsley. Frida Lovasa. Javon Lutz. Ethan McCarthy. Cameron Michael Minix. Rebecca Lynn Minix. Brady Alexander Moyes. Nicholas Ryan Moore. Nicalvin Reed Morningstar. <laughs> Cheyenne Evelyn Jean Moss. <laughs> Skylar Pike. Noah David Blake Pratt. Jasmine Marie Quinn. Cole Rickoff. Ryan Douglas Sheets. Hunter Sickmiller. Sergio Jesus Tapia. Blake Andrew Thompson. (laughs) 
Sergio Villegas Jr. Braxton Haven Wolf. Grace Elizabeth Wood. Elijah Brian Wu. Alex James Zayner. Austin Lee Zayner. Ladies and gentlemen, class of 2022. Over the last several years, it has become tradition that the graduating class presents a slideshow to honor the graduates in special class activities. At this time, the class of 2022 will give their final class presentation.
shine in the snow-covered hills Well, a landslide bring you down Oh, the landslide bring you down I always knew this day would come We'd be standing one by one With our future in our hands So many dreams, so many plans I always knew after all these years There'd be laughter, there'd be tears But never thought I'd walk away With so much joy, but so much pain And it's so hard to say goodbye Tonight, if you need help, if you need help, I'll shut down the city lights. I'll lie, cheat, I'll beg and bribe to make you well, to make you well. When enemies are at your door, I'll carry you away from more. If you need help, if you need help, your hope dangling by a string, I'll share in your suffering to make you well, to make you well. Give me reasons to believe that you would do the same for me, and I would do it for you. For you. Maybe I'm not. 
moving on I'll love you long after you're gone For you For you You will never sleep alone I'll love you long after you're gone And long after you're gone, gone, gone When you fall like a statue I'm gonna be there to catch you Put you on your feet You on your feet And if your well is empty Not a thing will prevent me Tell me what you need What do you need I surrender honestly You've always done the same for me So I will do it for you At this time, I would like to take a moment to thank the staff at Culver Elementary School and Culver Community Middle School High School for molding and shaping the young lives that we have in front of us tonight. Before I give my farewell speech to the class of 2022, Culver Schools is saying farewell to one staff member, bus driver Linda McEwen, and one high school teacher, Mrs. Teresa Jacobson. We would like to thank you for your many years of service, dedication, and effort to make Culver family a better place. You will be missed. <laughs> class of 2022, your class motto, nothing we do changes the past, everything we do changes the future. Even though we can't go back and change the past, Let's take a trip down memory lane. Elementary years were filled with great fun and enjoyment, from field trips to making giant cookies. You moved from kindergarten all the way to the top dog at CES. Do you remember during your sixth grade year, the principal had to move her office to the middle of your hallway just to help control your behaviors? Let's be honest, we all knew it was the boys. Of course, we heard about it, those behaviors up at the middle school. So our plan was, time for you to meet Mr. Browder. <laughs> at that time, behavior started to change, a little. Boys continued their personality while the girls politely kept moving forward. As time went on, those same quiet, polite, soft-spoken girls found their voice and started to be heard. Those same boys finally started to mature, a little. To quote two of them, you have to admit, I am much better now. Thanks, Willie. <laughs> and you haven't had to yell at me since my freshman year. Oh, Tucker, I was just tired of yelling. <laughs> Middle school years went by quickly and everybody wanted to skip those times, besides the times at Indiana Beach and Kings Island, of course. High school years found new friendships and challenges. Freshman year, trying to find your place at the table to your sophomore year of starting to understand high school life. I imagine you'll never forget spring break 2020 during that year. Your spring break got extended a lot, lot longer. Challenges of virtual learning, not seeing classmates, and not having extracurriculars up for the remainder of the year was very difficult. Your junior year, what a challenge. Managing your toughest academic year through a pandemic. You had to worry about staying six feet apart. Pull up your mask. Don't cough. Have you been in close contact? What a mental drain. However, you continue to take on that challenge and succeed. And finally, you get to enter your senior year. Somewhat back to normal. No mask, no contact tracing. Extra credits continued as normal. Some old traditions even continue. Parents, do you remember Back in the day when mullets were popular? <laughs> Even perms? 
Did you ever think they would come back in style? I didn't. But not just come back, come back together at the same time. A permed mullet. Thanks, boys. The great senior trip to Florida returned, senior skip day even returned, even though it wasn't much of a secret. Matter of fact, it became public because a newscast happened to be there that day. And we had a certain student do the gritty across the beach on the news. Thanks, Junior. And the senior prank returned. Well, somewhat. Who knew that we had cameras in the school? I must say that it was fun watching you clean it up the next day. Ah, the memories. Overall, you had many things to remember. This is what I remember from your class. This class was always willing to serve and help the community. Countless of times, countless of hours. During their time here, this class had a regional academic all-star, a state qualifying FFA team, a three-peat in fall bonanza, the only class to do so. Many students further their education, many students graduating early, many students entering the armed forces. Thank you. So even though times were challenging and tough, you accomplished and you succeeded. But most of all, we are proud because this class came together during the hardest of times. The way you treated and cared for one another. You showed that if you needed anything, I am here for you. You asked, how are you doing? You said, I love you. You became family. And that is what makes Culver so special. When all said and done, we will have each other's back. We will come together. We will do what it takes to succeed. To succeed. We are family. We are Culver. We are community. Class of 2022, we are so proud of you. Now go on and change your future. Congratulations. Class of 2022, please stand. At this time, Senior Class President Adrian Scouton will lead the class in the turning of the tassel. Ladies and gentlemen, class of 2022.